for the discussion. Today we shall continue with composition and types of composition. Composition. Now, first of all, what do we mean by composition? Composition means bringing together different parts to form a whole. Bringing together different parts to form a whole. Remember that in writing, remember that in writing, that a writing comprises of different parts. So when these parts are being brought, are being brought together, it forms a whole, or we say it forms just one complete writing. So to write, there are different parts. Now, I did mention in our last class that we have different types of composition. I hope you still remember what are those types, what are the types of composition which I mentioned to you. It's okay, you remember that I did mention narrative composition, I talked about the descriptive composition, I talked about the argumentative composition and the expository composition and letter writing. We talked about letter writing because letter writing is also a form of composition. We also have articles. Articles are also composition. Now, in letter writing, I did talk about the formal and the informal letter. That was the only type of composition which I explained in detail. I explained and I wrote out the format for writing a formal letter and an informal letter. So today we shall consider the other types of composition, which are the four main types of composition, like the narrative, the expository, argumentative, and the descriptive in detail. Now, what do we mean by narrative? Or what do you mean by narration? To narrate. It simply means to tell a story. Now, narrative composition simply means an act of telling a story. It could be oral or it could be written. So composition could be oral or it could be written. So to narrate means you give an account of what you had witnessed. You may, you may be called by maybe a policeman for interrogation and you're being interrogated about what happened. Supposing you had witnessed, you witnessed a fight and the police calls you to give an account, to narrate what happened. That is a story which you are going to tell to the police officer. So that is narration and that is narrative writing. So if you're asked to write a narrative composition, there are many topics which can form a topic which can be used in writing a narrative composition. Could be maybe your first day at school, your visit to the museum, your visit to the zoo. There are so many topics to write a narrative on. Now, let's consider the features of narrative writing. Features of narrative composition. One is the use of paragraphs. Use of paragraphs. You remember that your writing would have paragraphs. There is no writing that you would write that would come without paragraphs. You remember that all the ideas 
something different paragraph. You do not lump up two or three ideas in one paragraph. You must split them into different paragraphs so that the ideas will be detailed, sorry, will be explained and developed properly. Now, you also make use of simple sentences. of the simple past tense in writing a narrative. Remember that a narrative or a narration is something that has ha that happened in the past and then you are, you are telling it in the present. You are now narrating it to somebody in the present but it is an event which occurred in the past. So you make use of your simple past tense. You know that in, your, in our daily lives, we've been narrating. You watch movies and then you narrate. You remember, you narrate a lot. In your homes, when you're with your friends, when you're with your parents and your siblings, you narrate an event which you had once witnessed in the past. Even the, even the, the, the movies you watch, maybe you sit your sibling down. And then you tell your sibling about that movie, or you just tell your sibling or your friend about the story. That is narration. So we all involve, we are all involved in narration at one point or the other in our life. So the use of simple past tense is being used because you are telling somebody about what happened in the past. Number three, we have descriptive words and phrases. Descriptive words and phrases. Now, narration uses description a lot. We involve description a great deal in our narration because you need to describe things. You need to describe events. Remember that narration, that you're trying to tell somebody about events, what happened. So your event should be ordered in a sequence. Example, in arranging your event in and in a chronological manner is first, maybe you visited, it was your first day at school. Now your first day at school. First of all, you would need to tell us how you left your home. Who took you to the school? Who accompanied you? Were you accompanied by your siblings alongside your parents? What system of transport did you use? Did you use a car? Did you use a motorbike? Then, how was your journey on the road? What were the things you saw? What were the, what were the places you passed through before you got to the school? Now, upon arrival at the school, how were you received? Were you received by a receptionist? Were you received by the school security? Was, were there any people or was anybody you asked directions from? That you should be able, sorry, you should be able to write your narrative in such a manner. Then that will be the introduction. After that, you can now proceed to how maybe you got to the matron's office or the principal's office or where you paid your fees or where you were being checked in to the dormitory or how you met your dormitory mistress and was introduced to your dormitory mistress. What were the rules and regulations given to you? Were you, uh, was there any orientation that was conducted for you? And so many things, the students you met at that particular time, the new friends you met and the people you, interact, you interacted with. All these things I have mentioned should be able, you should be able 
to write them in a detailed manner in a narrative. Then you now go to the body of the, sorry, yes, you now go to the body of the narrative. All the things that happened from that day, from, the, uh, from when you arrived school, from when you left your home, your arrival at school, and the activities that happened throughout that day till when you went to bed. So all the events that happened on that day, you should be able, you should be able to write them in a detailed manner. Now we go to expository composition. Expository composition. What do we mean by expository? What we mean by expository is trying to write to give an information or detailed explanation about a subject matter. Therefore, an expository composition is a composition that gives explanation or gives detailed information about the subject matter. Example of expository composition topics are examination malpractice in secondary school, examination malpractice in secondary school, and rape in our society. You would notice, or if you are current, you would know that rape is at the in case now in our society. So that can form a topic for an expository composition. You can also write about how uh, how cassava is sorry how Gary is being processed in an expository topic, or you can write about the traditional festival in your village. You can also write about a birthday party. How is the birthday party being conducted, or a traditional marriage ceremony? How is it done? What are the processes involved in all these things I have, in all these topics I've mentioned? Example, you have examination malpractice in Nigeria or in secondary school. Now you're trying to write and explain to your reader what it is all about. How does it, how it is, how is it being carried out? Who are the people involved in it? What effect does it have on the students? and the society. So in writing this, you should be able to define what your subject is about. That is examination malpractice. What is it? You could say it is an illegal, it is an illegal behavior being exhibited during examination, which is contrary to rules and the regulations that govern examination. Then how is it being done? You see? that it involves writing answers in pieces of papers, giraffing, trying to peep into your neighbor's work in order to write. Even talking in examinations form is part of my practice because it is against the rules and regulations that govern examination. If you do not take excuse from your teacher or the investigator, it becomes an offense and amounts to malpractice. Then, Maybe that the teacher writes on the board for the students to copy. That is examination malpractice. Or students browse the answers on their phones. It is examination malpractice. So those are the... We are sorry for the break. We are having network challenges. So I did say that uh, we stopped at the people involved in sorry, how the method of examination or practice. Then you can now go further to talk about the people who are involved in examination or practice. First of all, you have the students. So the people who are involved in examination or practice are the students, you have parents, how do they get involved in examination or practice? They give their children money to pay for examination malpractice so that maybe teachers would write on the board for them to copy or special examination centers. 
the, the parents take the students to special examination centers and register their children there so that they will be able to sit in examination. We also have the teachers. Some of the teachers write on the board for the students to copy. We also have the invigilators. The invigilators who come to invigilate the exams allow the aid and abate examination malpractice. So in your uh, expository composition, you should be able to bring all that in. If you bring all that in, then you would have been able to explain or inform your reader about what you're writing about. Now, let's go to the features of expository composition. simple present tense. In an expository composition, you make use of the present tense. Remember that your writing in the present, you're trying to give an information. Although this thing has been happening before now, you are not going to write it in with uh, your past tense. You're not going to make use of past tense because you're not writing a narrative. You're making use, you're going to make use of the present tense. Now, another one is topic sentence. Topic sentence. I hope you still remember what the topic sentence is. That it is a sentence that gives the main idea, that tells you about the main idea of the writer, of what an what the writer is writing about it is the main idea of the writing now you know that you remember that your writing is going to be in different paragraphs so a paragraph one page a paragraph should be able to carry your topic sentence now these topic sentences would be further developed by your supporting sentences your supporting sentences will now explain your topic sentences. Example of a topic sentence is examination in the social ill. That examination is a social vice that will bring practice. Make use of details to support your topic sentence. Example of a topic sentence, which I say is examination malpractice is a social ill that is prevalent in our education system or in our academic environment. Now, that sentence alone gives the reader an idea of what the whole writing is going to talk about. It presents at a glance about what the writer is writing about. That is the topic sentence. Then you can now go further to explain the topic sentence. First of all, by defining examination malpractice. After you would have defined examination malpractice and how it is being done, you would have been able to give a detailed explanation of what you're writing about. I hope it is clear. Is there any question? Okay. Another one is, another example is rape in our society. Rape in our society. Now, you can say that, first of all, let's go to the topic sentence. If you are to write on such a topic, you say rape is a social vice that is becoming rampant or that is becoming common in our society now a day. That is a topic sentence that would give your reader an insight of what your writing would focus on. Then you can go further to define what rape is. So if you are defining what rape is and how
how it is being done, how it is how it is being done, and the victims of rape, the individuals or the gender that fall victim, that become victim of rape, then you would have been able to explain your topic sentence and then give explanation and information about the subject matter rape. Now, no use of personal pronouns. No use of personal pronouns. Avoid using personal pronouns. personal pronouns like I, we, it should be avoided because you are anonymous. You are writing about what has been on ground before. This is not your opinion. Your opinion does not come here. It is only maybe when you are asked, if you are asked to proffer a solution or to proffer a comment or suggestion on how the social vibe or whatever you're writing on could be caught. That is when you now say it is there for the writer's opinion or the writer's suggestion that this should be done. You won't still use the personal pronouns. Now, we go further to descriptive composition. Descriptive composition. As the name implies, it means describing places, describing events, and describing people. You could be asked to describe a place that maybe you have one visited or a place you know. You could be asked to describe somebody. Maybe if you're writing about your friend, maybe my best friend. The topic, my best friend, is an example of a descriptive composition topic. Then, in writing about your best friend, you should be able to write detailed, you should be able to explain, to describe your friend, your friend. And in describing your friend, you should pay attention to, you should be able to introduce your friend and describe your friend. How does your friend look like? Look like? What are the things that he or she likes? What are the kind of clothes? What are the kind of clothes that he or she loves wearing? What is his or her favorite meal? Which church or what school, which school does he or she attend? So you should be able to write that about your friend. Or my as my best, my bosom friend, if you're asked to write about that. Or if you had visited a place or you know a place and you want to write about a place, you should be able to describe the place in such a way that whoever is reading it would see the place, would visualize the place in his or her mind's eyes to know how the place looks like. Example, you should be able to pay attention to the environment, the weather, the people living at that particular place, what is the tradition of that particular place? What is the, what's the population? You have an idea about the population of people living at the place that you're talking about. So you should be able to describe that. And then we also describe events. Events such as the birthday party, uh, uh, traditional a traditional marriage ceremony is also a descriptive a form of description. You can describe the processes that are being carried out in a traditional marriage. You can describe your church. You can describe a zoo. You can describe anywhere you think anything you feel you 
can describe or you are asked to describe. So in doing that, you should be able to be a very good observer. Pay attention to your environment so that you will be able to give details. And if you're asked to write, make sure that if you're asked to choose a topic to write on, make sure that it is a topic that you would have had enough information about it on it. If not, your writing would be so short and wouldn't meet the required standard of writing. Now, in, in the descriptive composition, in the descriptive composition, you still make use of your simple, your present simple tense. Sorry, your simple present tense. of paragraphs like in other compositions. Our time is running out, it's past 10. Sorry, our time is past 10, so we will end the class here. Let me go back to what we have done for today. We considered composition. And I did say that composition is made of parts. Composition means bringing different parts together to form a whole. You will see that in your write-up that you have one whole writing, but it comprises of different parts. You bring those parts together and develop them to form a whole. Then I did talk about the types of composition. I talked about the narrative composition that it involves what storytelling in your daily life today, narrating stories, narrating movies to your friends. That is a form of narration. It is narration. It is a form of a narrative composition, whether it is orally or it is written. Then I have told you about the different uh, the features of narrative writing that. You write it in the simple past tense, then you make use of sensory details, like you make use of uh, words and phrases that will describe the situation and the event, such as, sorry, you make use of a uh, descriptive, you make a great use of description, and you should be able to describe the event that you had witnessed. Make use of descriptive phrases and descriptive words. Then I did talk about making use of uh, making use of your your paragraphs. That each idea, a new idea, should be developed in a new paragraph. Ideas should not be lumped up in one paragraph. You shouldn't have two or three ideas being lumped up in one paragraph. Then you should be able to sustain your reader's interest. That your introduction should be so captivating. So, so such that it will sustain your reader's interest for the reader to continue reading till the end. If not, if your introduction is not captivating, then you would have lost your reader's interest and then the essence of your writing is defeated. I talked about, I mentioned the expository writing, that it is a writing that gives information and detailed explanation about a subject matter. Example, we have examination and practice, rape in Nigeria, the processing of Gabi, and so many other topics you could think of. And then in the use of in writing and expository composition, you should not make use of personal pronouns because the opinion does not come in except when you are asked to proffer a solution or a suggestion on how a particular subject matter could be handled. Then you can now write, it is the writer's, therefore it is the writer's suggestion or opinion that this and this should be done. And then you should make use of the simple present tense, the simple present tense. And we talked about, we talked about the descriptive composition that it aims at describing simple events and places. And it is 
describing these people events and places, you should be able to describe it in such a way that your reader would see, could see, and could feel, could touch, could smell what you are describing. Then we shall. Sorry for this way. Now, let's try and round up with the argumentative composition. Now, argumentative composition. As the name implies, it means to argue in order to persuade. Here you argue in order to persuade your listener to accept your point, even if he or she wouldn't have accepted it. But the point which you should you would give would should be able to make your hearer or your reader accept your point. It means persuasion. It involves a great deal of persuasion. You're going to use persuasive words. Your points should be so hard and should be strong enough that would counter any opposition. And in your in a discrete, in an argumentative composition, you have two sides. You do usually have two sides: the proposing side and the opposing side. The proposing side is the side that stands for the subject that is being argued upon, and then the opposing side is the side that rejects the subject that is being argued upon. You argue, you do not argue in favor of that subject, you argue against the particular subject under argument. Now, in the introduction, if it is an oral argument, you have people to address. Usually, you have the panel of judges, you have the timekeeper, you have your co-debaters and your audience. So you should be able to address them. Then, in a written form, in a written argumentative composition, we do not make use of vocatives. Now, vocatives, what we mean by vocatives is that this panel that will address the, uh, the judge, the timekeeper, your audience, and your co-debaters. But in a written composition, you do not make use of vocatives, you do not address anybody then you just go to argue. And then your point, which you are going to give, should be able to counter any point that your reader has in mind. Remember, in, written, uh, uh, in, a, written, in a written argumentative composition, you wouldn't have your student or your opponent to argue with. It is your reader, your examiner now, will be your Opponent. So you should be able to write points, give points that will counter the point that your reader or examiner would have written against you to oppose your point. So that is what argumentative composition is all about. Then you can make use of your own opinions too, but your opinions should be the ones that are based on facts. And then you can also use data. So you can make use of uh, pre-existing data that people have written concerning what you are trying to argue. You know, maybe you have done your research, you can make use of those results the results of researchers who have researched already or who have written about what you are writing or arguing about. That will help to boost your point and to counter your opponent's point. So, uh, we shall round up, we will round up here for today.